ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिरा ज्ञाजन चलाकय चक्षुर्मील तमें तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद यद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त बृंद नरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण टीचिंग ऑफ क्वीन कुंती चैप्टर ट्वेल्व बिविलिंग पास टाइम्स नवेद कश्चि भगव चिकीर्षित तवे हनस्य नृणा विडंबन नयस्य यस्त कश्चिदयोस्ति कर्चि द्वेश्यस्मतिर्नृणा ओ लॉर्ड नो वन कैन अंडरस्टैंड युअर ट्रांसेंडेंटल पास टाइम्स विच अपीयर टू बी ह्यूमन एंड सो आर मिसलीडिंग You have no specific object of favor, nor do you have any object of envy. People only imagine that you are partial. <clears throat> so, very interesting words. No one can understand your transcendental past things, um, which appear to be human, and so are misleading. You have no object of specific object of favor, nor do you have any object of envy. People only imagine that you are partial. The Lord's mercy upon the fallen souls is equally distributed. He has no one as the specific object of hostility. The very conception of the person who got it as a human being is misleading. His pastimes appear. Here to be exactly like a human beings, but actually they are transcendental and without any tinge of material contamination. He is undoubtedly known as partial to his pure devotees, but in fact he is never partial. <laughs> as much as the sun is never partial to anyone, uh, he is undoubtedly known as partial, but in fact he is never partial. by utilizing the sun ray sometimes even the stones become valuable whereas a blind man cannot see the sun although there are enough sun rays before him darkness and light are two opposite conceptions but this does not mean that the sun is partial in distributing its rays the sun rays are open to every one but the capacities of the receptacles differ foolish people think that devotional service is flattering the lord to get special mercy Okay, so <clears throat> this is important to understand. Okay, before this, um, uh, past times appear to be exactly like human beings, but actually they're transcendental and without any tinge of material contamination. So always, whenever we are um, hearing Lord's past times, uh, we should always remember that there is no tinge of material contamination. Mm. Be it when we are hearing most difficulties uh, is to understand Krishna's pastimes, Rama's pastimes are also pretty bewildering. Um, uh, so because in both these forms, literally he appears like a human being, and uh, his actions are very similar to the those of a human being. So people. it's very easy for people to hear his past times in either of these forms and think oh this looks just like a human being but we should always remember that uh, they are transcendental and there is no tinge of material contamination and we should not speculate about the reasons why the lord did something we should simply try to hear from previous acharyas because only realized souls only pure devotees can actually reveal the underlying meaning or reason why the lord does something 
See, actually, it's a very simple thing to understand, right? So suppose, say, I mean, people, uh, material world, there are so many business dealings, etc. Or, you know, there are so many relations. And many times uh, I see devotees are confused about how to understand what a particular person has said or, you know, it's so complex. You know, many times people say something but have something else in their mind. So generally, it's complex to understand individuals, right, and their intent. Uh, etc right so who can understand the lord who can understand krishna his intentions i was just before the class i was reading uh, you know the cursing of jaya vijaya by kumaras it's so bewildering we just cannot understand if you are simply reading without um, uh, commentaries we just cannot understand why is the i mean looks like uh, in the in this past time specifically vishnu he seems to be glorifying kumaras uh, and Kumaras had cursed Lord's devotees. Mm, externally, it looks like the conversation is going in some other direction. Externally, it looks like uh, Lord is actually appreciating the Brahmanas, Kumaras were Brahmanas. and But actually, the underlying meaning is something totally different. This we cannot understand. We cannot speculate also because we have to be in the same position as the Lord for us to be able to understand what He is saying. So only the pure devotees can actually understand, which is why, you know, when we actually many devotees are enamored by, you know, they want to hear pastimes, etc. But I've seen that many times, you know, uh, uh, may not be exalted devotees, but not very fully experienced devotees or not very advanced devotees, they narrate the pastimes of the Lord, but with their own interpretation, with their own feelings, with their own expressions, uh, which actually might not be authentic at all. And that is why it's not good to be like sentimental, because sentimental means we will uh, mental speculate when we are, you know, discussing Leela specifically, right? So, we have to be very, very careful. Whatever we are, we cannot understand Krishna. We should be very clear. And who can understand Krishna? His pure devotees. And his pure devotees, who are, who, and it should be from our acharyas, preferably, because we are following a parampara. So we should ideally narrate uh, explanations or, you know, descriptions as given by Srila Prabhupada and previous acharyas. Not outside. And definitely not our own mental speculation. Because we, we should be clear. We cannot understand. We cannot understand. Simply in joking, we will say, oh, Krishna said like this. Like, you know, in some, uh, our own feeling. It was not said by any Acharya. It sounds very nice. You know, it sounds obviously, anything, any description of Krishna's past time sounds very nice. But we should understand there is something which is authentic. There is something which is not authentic. Not authentic also to us looks okay because we actually also don't understand the Lord. So we think, okay, whoever, whatever is saying, maybe this is the mood of the Lord. But it's not true. May not be true. So always, that is why, you know, as preachers, first of all, we have to be very, very careful as it is, as it is, as it is, as it is given. Not, no masala is required. No masala is required. Lord's pastimes have enough masala already. Right, and that masala is revealed to us by pure devotees. So we should simply repeat it, and we should try to, uh, you know, go into get into the mood, understand, etc. But we should simply repeat it and not add anything or remove anything. Right. So this is first thing, very important, because it is without any tinge of material contamination. We are materially contaminated, so we cannot speculate. This is the first important thing. Second thing is here. Um, Prabhupada here said where, uh, yeah, he is undoubtedly known to be partial, but in fact, he is never partial. Krishna is partial. Uh, Prabhupada says uh, slightly different things in different places. So he says that he has a intense affection, you know, for his devotees. Like I said, the Lord deals dealings with his devotees in Vrindavan. Right, Krishna's dealings with the devotees in Vrindavan is very different. Is very very different. Right. In fact, he tells in Bhagavatam we hear Krishna telling Gopi saying that I cannot repay you. I cannot repay. 
because you have given up everything for my pleasure i cannot repay it but then in bhagavad gita he says ye yatham am prapadyante tam stateva pajamiya meaning i i will reciprocate but here he is saying i am not able to reciprocate at all so which means that when he is dealing with his you know very dear devotee is uh, this partiality this that and all actually this is all out of the this one this is all with his dealings with people in this material world uh, he is well, he is not partial right but still he has extra affection for his devotees he has extra affection for devotees like it is clearly shown say uh, for example in uh, you know when ashwatthama leaves uh, fires those brahmastras to kill pandavas pandavas are busy trying to you know they are trying to take out their own weapons to counteract it etc but krishna is saying oh no time immediately he only nullifies the brahmastra no is it just his love his love for his devotees he will just do he is not waiting for oh did they pray did they ask for me for my help no he will do where emergency he will do he will just simply you know so he is he has extra affection he is extra, he is he is more inclined to his devotees and he can break his own rules that's his prerogative right but generally with respect to uh, in this material world the general dealings he is not partial meaning he doesn't say oh, i don't like this guy so i'm not going to give him my mercy no for him there is no object of uh, you know like what proper is saying no object of favor no object of envy hmm? <clears throat> then um yeah foolish people think that devotional service is flattering the lord to get special mercy so this is business right factually the pure devotees who are engaged in transcendental loving service of the lord are not a mercantile community mercantile means business merchants right so we are not here to do business with the lord right oh lord i am flattering you i am glorifying you give me this this is business a pure devotee does not do that a mercantile house renders service to someone in exchange for values the pure devotee does not render service unto the lord for such exchange and therefore the full mercy of the lord is open for him see this is very important right when we don't when we are not it's is like one way of looking at this is like you know you we do some we do service to krishna and we ask for a piece of glass because anything concerned with this material world is just like a piece of glass broken glass right no but for the devotee the full mercy is open full mercy is open what is the full mercy lord is ready to reciprocate with us be with us give him give us your his association give us his personal service that is full mercy not some you know some thing of this material world some uh, whatever some material asset or blah right that's not full mercy of the lord the full mercy of the lord is the lord, lord is willing to give himself up to the devotee that is the full mercy suffering and needy men inquisitive persons or philosophers make temporary connections with the lord to serve a particular purpose artha artha arti jigna sugnani when the purpose is served there is no more relation with the lord a suffering man if he is pious at all prays to the lord for his recovery but as soon as the recovery is over in most cases suffering man no longer cares to keep any connection with the lord the mercy of the lord is open for him but he is reluctant to receive it that is the difference between a pure devotee and a mixed devotee those who are completely against the service of the lord are considered to be in abject darkness those who ask for the lord's favor only at time of necessity are partial recipients of the mercy and those who are sent percent engaged in the service of the lord are full recipients of the mercy of the lord so it's very very clear all of us are hankering for mercy 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 please give mercy please give mercy is very very clear Uh, though we are not against the service of the lord so this doesn't apply to us those who ask for lord's favor only at the time of necessity and partial recipients of the mercy those who are sent percent engaged are full recipients of the mercy so if we want full mercy of the lord we should be sent percent engaged in the service of the lord such partiality in receiving the lord's mercy is relative to the recipient and it is not due to the partiality of the all merciful lord see this is very very important it depends on us what we want we want partial mercy we want full mercy we can decide hmm so that is why prabhupada elsewhere write that writes that 
Bhakti is the process of increasing faith in Krishna. Initially, our faith is very delicate, komal, komal shraddha. Then slowly it has to, as we make, as years pass in Krishna consciousness, ideally our faith in Krishna should become stronger and stronger and stronger and more fixed. And then we will be able to, we will be ready, okay, I am ready for full mercy of the Lord. Otherwise we are afraid, oh, oh, full mercy of the Lord, oh, we are saying that Krishna takes away things, you know, we are afraid. We are afraid to get full mercy of Krishna. So when our faith becomes very fixed, then we are ready, okay, I am ready. I am ready for receiving full mercy because I want full mercy. When the Lord descends on this material world by his all-merciful energy, he plays like a human being and therefore it appears that the Lord is partial to his devotees only, but that is not a fact. Despite such an apparent manifestation of partiality, his mercy is equally distributed. In the battlefield of Kurukshetra, all persons who died in the fight before the presence of the Lord got salvation without necessary qualifications because death before the presence of the Lord purifies the passing soul from the effects of all sins and therefore, the dying man gets a place somewhere in the transcendental abode. Mostly, they'll merge into Brahman. Prabhupada says that those who are on the battlefield, those who um, did not, I mean, they were not atheists or they were not against. Uh, even, I mean, whoever had even just simply considered that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, they, uh, they got salvation. And those who had a little bit more feeling, they had a little bit more feeling for Krishna, and Prabhupada elsewhere writes that they entered the transcendental abodes. And so, how can Krishna be considered partial? Uh, Putana came to kill Krishna and she got the position of a nurse in the spiritual world. So, how can he be partial? He did not see, oh, this is a demoness. He came to kill me. No. Krishna is ready to give mercy to anybody and everybody. Somehow or other, if someone puts himself open in the sun rays, he is sure to get the requisite benefit both by heat and by ultraviolet rays. Therefore, the conclusion is, the law, is that the Lord is never partial. It is wrong for people in general to think of him as partial. Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya sadhuna vinashaya chaduskrutam dharma samstapana arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. In order to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. When God incarnates, he has two missions, to vanquish the demons and deliver the sadhus, the faithful devotees. The word sadhu nam, which means saintly persons, refers to devotees. It has nothing to do with the worldly honesty or dishonesty, morality or immorality. It has nothing to do with material activities. See, sadhu doesn't mean material qualities, material good. Sometimes we may think that the word sadhu refers to a person who is materially good or moral. But actually the word sadhu refers to one who is on the transcendental platform. A sadhu, therefore, is a devotee because one who engages in devotional service is transcendental to material qualities. Actually, somewhere I was reading that even a brahmana, if he is not a devotee, he should not be seen. Hmm. Brahmana who is not a devotee should not be seen at all. As in, you know, so the only thing, the Lord, he is, I mean, for him it's only devotees. Brahmana means Brahmana. Vaishnava. Mm. So, Sadhu is therefore, therefore is a devotee. Now, the Lord comes to deliver the devotees, Paritranaya Sadhunam, but it is clearly stated in Bhagavad Gita that a devotee transcends the material qualities, Sagunan Samatityaita. A devotee is in a transcendental position because he is no longer the, under the control of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, ignorance. But if a sadhu is already delivered, being on the transcendental platform, then where is the necessity of delivering him? See, did you understand the logic here? Hmm. So this is referring to a pure devotee. A pure devotee is Sagunan Samatityaita. And he has already transcended the material qualities. So if he is already transcended, then what is the necessity? That means he is already delivered. So then what is the necessity of delivering him again? This question may arise. 
Lord comes to deliver the devotee, but the devotee is already delivered. <laughs> Therefore, the word vidambanam, meaning bewildering, is used in this verse because this appears contradictory. See who can who can pose this kind of logic? I mean, it just such clarity of thought. The answer to this contradiction is that a sadhu, a devotee, does not require deliverance, but because he is very much anxious to see the Supreme Lord face to face, Krishna comes to deliver him from the clutches of matter, from which he has already been delivered, but to satisfy his inner desire. See, so beautiful. Krishna comes because the devotee wants to see the Supreme Lord face to face. That is the reason Krishna comes, because the devotee is already delivered. But he is coming to satisfy his inner desire, the inner desire of a devotee. Just as a devotee wants to satisfy the Lord in all respects, the Lord even more wants to satisfy the devotee. Such are the exchanges of loving affairs. Even in our ordinary dealings, if we love someone, we want to satisfy him or her, and he or she also wants to reciprocate. So if the reciprocation of loving affairs exists in this material world, in what an elevated way must it exist in the spiritual world? There's a verse in which the Lord says, the sadhu is my heart and I am also the sadhu's heart. The sadhu is always thinking of Krishna and Krishna is always thinking of the sadhu who is devotee. Hmm, so beautiful. And love someone, we want to satisfy him or her, he also wants to reciprocate. So the reciprocation of loving affairs exists in this material world. In what an elevated way must it exist? Meaning this reciprocation of the loving affairs in this material world has its own problems also, right? So there will be happiness and also distress. But in the spiritual world, it's so elevated. First is there's no end. There's no end to trying to please the other person. Meaning it goes on, it's like infinite. It's and there's no ex there's no limit to how much one can please the other person. And of course then there is no inebriety, meaning there is no distress along with that happiness, alongside the happiness. So, for example, uh, I was reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, conversation between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai, oh, one of the best conversations one can really, is just out of the world, literally out of the world. So, in that, uh, Sri Ramananda Rai is saying that actually the, the love of gopis is unimaginable. Gopis don't want to, Gopis desire to serve Krishna is characterized by the fact that they don't want to themselves enjoy. They don't want to enjoy. I mean, they, they're, they might be dressing nicely, they might be the most beautiful women in Lord's creation, etc. But everything that they are doing is just to enhance Krishna's pleasure. No, the beauty is that they they actually when they see Radha and Krishna together, their happiness increases thousand folds than direct association with Krishna. So they their whole focus is we want to uh, make sure that Radha and Krishna meet. Right? My, but now look at Radha Rani. Radha Rani is looking at gopis and thinking, no, no, I want them to enjoy with Krishna. Because when she sees Gopi is enjoying with Krishna, then her happiness increases thousandfold. Meaning that everybody in the spiritual world is just engaged to increase, give happiness to the other person. And of course, Krishna. Center is Krishna, but Krishna and any other devotee, not me. I mean, it's just unimaginable. We just cannot understand uh, so such height of selflessness. Height of selflessness, including Radha Rani. I mean, though Krishna deserves most pleasure being in her, uh, accepting her service, but she also wants to, you know, she feels more happiness when somebody else serves Krishna. So it's just unimaginable. 
you know, we are so stuck in this material world with tiny little small small things we are you know so much of selfishness so much of envy so much of bad feelings i mean how can we go to the spiritual world is very elevated elevated the loving affairs in the spiritual world are very very elevated the appearance and disappearance of the lord within this material world are called chikirshitam pastimes it is krishna's pastime that he comes of course when the lord comes he has some work to perform <laughs> pastime means like time pass nahi hai and he has some work to perform to protect the sadhu and kill those who are against the sadhu but both these activities are his pastimes hmm? that means that he derives pleasure so pastime gives us a meaning of over oh, some doing something for pleasure yeah because it gives pleasure to the lord but he also has some purpose not like <laughs> we do time pass vela you know useless waste of time it's not like that the lord is not envious the killing of demons is also display of his affection sometimes we may punish our children by giving them a very strong slap because of love and nowadays i don't think anybody slaps <laughs> similarly when krishna kills a demon this killing is not on the platform of material jealousy or envy but on the platform of affection therefore it is mentioned in the shastra as the vedic literature that even the demons killed by the lord attain immediate salvation putana for example was a demoniac witch who wanted to kill krishna when krishna was performing pastimes as a small child she coated the nipple of her breast with poison and approached krishna's home to offer the milk of her breast when krishna sucks my nipple she thought the child will immediately die but that was not possible who can kill krishna instead she herself was killed for krishna sucked the nipple and also sucked out her life altogether but what was the result krishna took the bright side see is very very important krishna always takes the bright side this demoniac woman came to kill me he thought but somehow or other i have sucked her breast so she is my mother thus putana attained the position of krishna's mother in the spiritual world mother means nurse This is explained in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, where Uddhava says to Vidura that Krishna is so kind, God is so kind that even the witch who wanted to kill him with poison was accepted as his mother. Since Krishna is such a kind God, whom else shall I worship but Krishna? Right? See, just such a beautiful statement. Whom else will I want to worship but Krishna? Because Krishna is such a kind person. he has so much love who else do we want to would we want to worship why would we want to worship anybody else people are so stuck they want to still do demigod worship this that but who can be like krishna is there anybody else like krishna we cannot find it actually bhagavatam says even narayana and lakshmi everybody is attracted by krishnas form and krishna's qualities even narayana is attracted lakshmi is attracted everybody is attracted i mean vaikuntha vaikunth nobody else knows much about krishna loka right but narayana lakshmi they know and they are attracted so what is the reason we are not getting attracted by krishna i mean it's really something to think about right and that's the reason i'm saying that you know unless we hear unless we hear about krishna's beautiful qualities you know amazing qualities how can we develop attraction attachment to him how can we get attracted by him though he is all attractive his existence itself is all attractive but still we are we are unfortunate right we are attracted by his useless worthless things of this material world but how do we transfer transfer or you know that attraction to material things how do we transfer it to krishna by hearing about him by hearing about him see propad is so beautiful his purports are so beautiful i mean we don't need to hear from anybody we just simply need to hear from propad he is a pure devotee is bringing about the exact authentic feeling for krishna and these things are present in bhakti rasamrita sindhu and it's such a exalted topic you know many of these things just overhead transmission most of 
bhakti rasamrita sindhu up to chapter 19 we can read and understand after that it's all mostly it's very difficult to understand because it's all about krishna as a person his qualities his feelings i mean these things are so difficult to understand because krishna is not like a simple person also it's so complicated now we as ordinary human beings only we are so complicated then how easy will it be to understand krishna but when we read propas purports propa is so mercifully explaining all these things like you know teaching to children so it's it's very easy to we won't get confused you know many times people say oh propa did not give us so many things that our previous acharyas gave because we cannot digest them in this time and age where we are if propa had given all those gory de- all those you know delicate complex details of rasa we would have gone crazy we would have gone crazy we wouldn't have been able to understand so propa has given us only whatever is required first for our complete purification and for us to get sufficiently attracted attached to krishna and then propa himself has said okay then slowly you can go and read acharyas but don't jump over me propa said meaning first we should read propa first we should be fixed in what propa is saying his mood what he has given the philosophy he has given then we can go and hear from other acharyas right anyway so this is a question that all of us should think about saying that am i sufficiently attracted to krishna if not why right maybe you know i'll just open it up for people to share why if at all if you are attracted to krishna then it's good then you should think about saying that okay how much am i attracted am i more attracted than is or, or this question might be helpful is there anything in this material world which attracts me more than krishna right and if there is something in this material world which attracts us more than krishna then we should ask this question why why is it that i am getting attracted to something of this material world more than krishna hmm I don't know if anybody wants to just uh, share anything on this point. You can go ahead. Yeah, Akshay Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. So, Prabhu Ji, I think we, uh, means at least for in my case, I I have things which I am more attracted to Krishna right now. But I will, I'm not going to lie. Mm. So, and the the reason behind that is the immediate immediate and uh, right now what is in front of me right so mm-hmm. i can feel it i can uh, what i can have experience the results it. immediately right experience mm. it so that mm. is why that real life experience is mm. what is having more impact okay okay Yeah, Tiran Dwee Pro. You're on mute. You're saying anything. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, I don't know. Tiran Dwee Pro, I can't hear anything you're saying. You're still on mute. So the point is that we i mean it's a rhetorical question meaning there is nothing there cannot be anything in this material world which is which which can be more attractive to us than krishna uh, the only reason we are in that stage is because we are in illusion about the world around us and uh, we are in ignorance about krishna right so uh, we have to first remove the ignorance actually the illusion will continue for some time illusion cannot be immediately removed but the ignorance about krishna meaning we should hear about krishna and the more we hear about krishna automatically the bhakti it is, which is there the love for krishna which is there sleeping in our hearts will awaken awaken right and when that happens automatically the illusion will come down right it's not the other way around that is why in bhakti we don't do anything artificially we just simply you know nudge people to just engage in bhakti do engage in more service engage in sadhana service association of devotees because this will be the effect the effect will be uh, because somehow they'll get to hear about krishna and when they hear about krishna uh, from propa then automatically their love will will get awakened 
right and then not gradually then that illusion will go because we'll start realizing oh boss there's nothing else there's nothing else nothing else is more valuable more attractive than krishna mm, so that is a process that is why shavanam from pure devotees is very very important and for us pure devotees still a prophet so we simply read his books that's all okay so i'll close here unless anybody has anything else to say ओके जगत गुरु शिल प्रोपाद की जय समवेद गौरव भक्त बंदी की जय वाचा कल्पत रूप चक्रवास पति कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण दंड हरे कृष्ण